Why should men use their toxic masculinity to defend women, especially in the so-called black community? The same black females that refer to black men as dusty, that refer to black men as racial names. There's different racial terms that so-called black females use towards black men. These are the same black females that vow to not give birth to black sons. The same black females that have the highest abortion rate to the point where they're putting up bulletin signs saying the most dangerous place for an unborn black child is in the womb of his black mother. So why should men, especially so-called black men, defend black women? Since this incident that occurred with Will and Chris Rock, I've seen so many black females post on Instagram, black girl magic and divine femininity. Now those two words, black girl magic and divine femininity, I look at that as the same as you would hear a white supremacist say black power. Because before this took place, you have black females that's promoting to dating outside of their race. Everything they had to say about black men were negative. There are channels all over YouTube. Cynthia G., um, I think the one girl is called Red Pill something, right? There's a host of channels where black females are flooding these channels and in the comment section, they have nothing negative to say about black men. Very few women that's defending black men online. And shout out to Jessica X. She's one of my favorite female YouTubers. And she's been quite consistent. So Jessica X, shout out to you. But why should men defend women in this modern time, especially when they say they really don't need men? And we only hear that mainly in the black community where black females say we don't need you. We can do better by ourselves because they're educated. We're living in an age where women are asking for equal rights. So if you have equal rights, if we are equal, then why do you need a man to defend you? Why do you need a man to risk his life to defend you as a woman? Now, I understand if you are protecting your wife, if you are protecting your lover, if you are protecting your mother, your daughter, your sisters, your aunt, people that are close to you, that mean something to you. I can understand you protecting them, but even then, men, we have to choose our battles wisely. We have to make the right choice when choosing our battles. We just can't jump out there on the firing line for some females that might not be worthy of being protected by you. I'll repeat that. Women have to be worthy of your protection. And what I mean by that is there are cases where you have females that will start trouble. They will be the troublemaker. They will start trouble with men. For example, when I used to go to clubs, I used to see situations, and I've also been in a couple of situations where I saw a young lady in the club, I complimented her, she told me straight up that she had a man, that she was there with a man, and all this other nonsense. I'm like, fine, no problem, I respect that, I apologize. And while I was walking away, she was still talking. And then I went about my business, Next thing you know, I got this guy approaching me saying, yo, man, let me holler at you for a moment. Now, he wasn't rude and he approached me 
the best way he knew how, I know I knew within myself that he really didn't know how to approach me. So you have a lot of guys that don't know how to approach a man and they'll walk up to them and they'll approach them in a way where it could be taken the wrong way. But if that guy don't have that type of discernment, he's going to read wrong. And next thing you know, you two are like exchanging words. One thing lead to another and you might end up hurt, dead or in jail. And that female goes on about her business feeling good because you risk your life for her. Right. And a lot of times I think is it feeds their ego when a guy jumps up and defends them, whether it's right or wrong. It makes that female feel good. So you're risking your life not because she was in danger or not because she was violated or disrespected, but to make her feel good. To make her feel protected. A man, sh a woman should feel safe and protected with a man without him having to put his life on the line for her. And that's where men have to really be careful and pick your battles wisely. So this dude walks up to me in the club like, yo, let me holler at you for a moment. So I'm like, what's up, man? So his body language was nervous. He was nervous to approach me. So what I did was I relaxed, but I was on guard because I don't know this dude. And he approaching me now. She's sitting back in the cut watching. She's watching her man at work. So I didn't want to make him look bad in front of her. So he walked up. Oh, let me let me holler at you for a moment. My girl tell me you trying to push up on her. You know, he got the body language, hands moving. My girl tell me you trying to push up on her. Nah, man. Uh, my bad, man. I didn't even know she was with anybody, bro. I said, you got a beautiful woman, man. I put my hand out to give him dap. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know if he should give me dap <laughs> or, or if he should swing on me, right? Because now I put him in a position where now his girl is watching him, right? And you have some dudes that would probably try to hit my hand away. No, nah, man, you disrespect me. And and then he, he escalate that. So, you know, I said, yo, my bad, man. I ain't know she was with anybody, right? Put my hand out to him. You got a beautiful girl, man. You're lucky dude. You know, he said, all right, so I gave him dap and whatnot. He went on about his business. Now, he probably got in trouble with her that night because she probably felt, you know, he should have did something to me. Right. But why? You know, especially if you don't know that this girl, she looked like she's by herself, you know, and you go over there, and you try to talk to her and whatnot or get to know her. And sometimes you're not even trying to get with her, man. You just want to compliment her. And then she'd take it the wrong way. And. You say, oh, my bad, I apologize. And you go about your business. She still goes and tell this dude. And then this dude now is put on a spot where he feels he's got to go do something or he's got to say something to you, which could escalate because you got a lot of hard head dudes out there that don't mind sacrificing themselves for nothing. You know, for something that's not even worth it, man. So there's a lot of females out there, man, that's not worthy of being protected because in many cases, these are females that started the trouble themselves. They started, they are, the, they are the authors of that problem. And then so she used the dude as the attack dog, as her muscle. You know, you got females that do that. If they know that they got a dude that, that's, uh, that's a live wire, you know, she's going she, to, to feed her ego. She's going to be like, oh, I got my man, you know, and white chicks have done that, too, using black men, you know, because white chicks have told dudes, man, like, yeah, I got a boyfriend, my man. Yeah, he's a big black man. And that makes the white dude shy away. That's trying to talk to her. <laughs> right. You know, so there's white chicks out there that use black men as their muscle. And to make guys. Get away from it. And she may not even be with a black dude, but she'll say that to this dude that's trying to talk to her just to get rid of him. And so this white dude is like, yo, I don't want no problem with this. This is in time past. But now you have a lot of dudes, man, are weak and that's afraid of white dudes, man, in this time period. But I came up in an age where a lot of stuff that happened now didn't happen back then. You know, very at a very minimum, it probably happened. You know, so. You have to, men, you have to be careful, man, when you call yourself jumping out there in the front line and trying to defend a woman. Listen, I, to be honest, 
I'm not going to defend no woman that's not my relative, that's not connected to me, man. Especially if she's a feminist and she's one of these females that's, that's talking all this smack against people like me. I remember when I first came out the military and I shared this story before. I was downtown and I'm, I saw this young lady and I spoke to her. All I did was speak to her. I just, hey, how you doing, lady? And she tells me, oh, I'm sorry, I don't date black men. And I'm like, wow, I've never heard anything like that before in my life coming from a woman that's the same complexion as me. This was a dark-skinned woman. She was darker than me, and she told me I don't date black men. I wasn't trying to talk to her. I just spoke to her. And she told me, oh, excuse me, I don't date black men. But that same female would expect someone like me to defend her if she is being violated. If she's being violated, she expect me now to come to her rescue because she's a woman. You know, I'm a woman and you just standing there, all these men standing there watching it happen. And none of these men did anything because these men are smart. They don't know what's going on, especially if you just got done telling me that you don't date people like me. You know, you rejected me and I wasn't even trying to talk to you. Right. So now you expect me to put my life on the line for you. No, you go get that man who you have confidence in. You know, that's who you go get. So now I'm not too quick to jump or play Captain Saberhole. I'm not quick to do that. You know, I'm not quick to put my life on the line. I'll sit back and I'll analyze. I'll see what happened. Even, even, in, even with my own sisters. Well, if I had a lady, man, the same thing with her, man. It's like I, I choose my battles wisely. You know, especially in brothers, you got to know your girl, man. You have to know the girl. You have to know the woman you lay down with. So when she come to you with something, right, because... One thing I found out just throughout life, respectable women are slow about letting their man know that someone disrespected her. My son's mother told me one day, because this guy would try to talk to her, and she would ne- every now and then she would tell me, but she wouldn't tell me too often because it wasn't an important thing. She felt I could handle that myself. But then when she did come to me with something, It's because of the fact that she told this dude no, and he kept pursuing her, and she felt uneasy. She came and let me know. So when I see this dude, do I walk up to him and punch him in his face? Or I say, yo, let me talk to you for for a minute, man, right? And give him a very nice warning. And usually guys can read other men's energy. You can read my voice. You can look in my eyes and tell, right? Right? So I talked to the dude, yo, man, so, you know, yada, yada, yada. Oh, my bad. I apologize. No more problems. I didn't have to walk up and slap this man for her to feel good or to feel for her to feel safe. You know, so when we step out in public, man, she ain't got nothing to worry about. Right. It's same thing with my sons. They're the same way. You know, whenever there was an issue with them growing up. They would never come to me if they had a problem with school. They would go to their moms because they know my reaction. But when they did come to me, I knew it was something serious. Like I had to deal with this gym coach out of one of my son's schools that were basically trying to trying to, you know, bully him and be his dad or something. You know, and gonna tell him, don't tell his parents. So I had to go deal with that gym coach. Never been a problem since, right? So, man, listen, you have to choose your battles, man. And your battles don't always consist of you putting your hands on another man because, number one, Will Smith, when he walked up and did that to Chris Rock, he don't know who was with Chris Rock that night, who's sitting out in the audience. They had no idea who's connected with him. See, Chris is from New York. So... It's easy for things to get out of hand, man, when you do stuff like that. Will is not thinking because Jada looked uncomfortable, but she's got a she's got a history. Whether or not that's that man's wife, Will has to choose wisely, man, chooses battles wisely. 
Now, me in a situation like that, and Chris was, you know, making that joke, you know, because a lot of jokes are funny. And if I laughed at it, it was funny. But if I felt she was uncomfortable, I'd go address him on it. And if he felt that bold to walk up there, I would have walked up there and said, yo, man, check this out, man. Don't do that. Right. I have a way of telling people don't do things and they can read my energy. Right. And they usually just kind of my bad and they back off. Right. But I would let him know. I pull him to the side, let him know. You didn't have to walk up there and slap that man like that. And I don't think Chris Rock should have dropped dropped charges. He should have pressed charges and sued him. You know, make him pay for it because now Chris got to deal with that for the rest of his life, especially if he's got children. And his children saw him get slapped like a woman on national, on worldly stage because you got Chinese news talking about that. You know, in their language, they like, and they show they showing what happened, and you got the Chinese news reporter talking about it, right? So a lot of females aren't worthy of being protected by men, especially if you call yourself a feminist and you say you don't need men. And that you're smarter than men, you're strong as men. You want to be in the military and fight on the combat zone. And then when it's time to go to combat, now you got woman problems. But all that black girl magic and divine feminine, there's no such thing as divine femininity. Femininity is not divine. There's no divinity. It has no share in divinity at all. Right? So those are just, to me... Um, White supremacists, because that's what they that's what they protect. That's what they promote. They promote white supremacy. With the way with the things you have to say about black men and calling us racial names and um, there's other racial names, too, that they call us. I can't even think about. It. I don't even let that enter my mental Rolodex. But you don't even want to give birth to a, a, a male child. But yet you expect someone that looks like your child. To protect you. You now rather have a baby by white men or other races than your own race, but yet you expect us to protect you and defend you. My question to all these women out there that feel that they're divine femininity and need to be protected. Are you worthy to be protected? Are you lady? Are you woman enough or such a lady to the point where you know how to try to, um, Resolve conflict before you even get to your man. Because there's certain things that you just don't take to him if you know he's going to react a certain way. And you never want to put your man, ladies, you never want to put your man in a position of feeling uncomfortable. I remember I was with this girl one time, man, and we walked, we was in, um, what's it, Midtown, right? Midtown Manhattan, man. And and this girl was, she was dressed sexy, it was during the summertime, and she had on these little sexy, and it was drawing so much attention, man. It drew, she drew so much attention, it made me feel uneasy. Because now you got guys that are, are eyeballing her and Googling her, and, you know, of course, women should be able to dress the way they want to dress and whatnot, but if you got dudes that's disrespectful, and then they start catcalling and, and saying things to your girl, man, it puts you in a position, man, where you don't want to look like a punk. But if that female, if her ego gets in the way, she want to see a fight. She want to see her man, you know, get into a fight and defend her honor or her respect. Right. So she really don't care about that man. She really don't care about what happens to him. And then if he do defend her honor and say he lose that fight, now she don't feel safe. She don't feel protected by him because he got his behind whooped. And now she's looking in other directions and she might end up with the dude that got done beating him down. Right? So, man, you got to be careful when you put yourself out there and want to defend these females, even when it comes to your own girl. Because this dude, and I spoke on this in the past, man, where this dude worked his whole life, man, for his family. And he got injured on the job and couldn't work no more. His wife started cheating on him. And then she tells me she's going to divorce him. And I'm like, why? I said, if you got a good man and he's, working, he's injured, she's like, nobody told him to go out there and get hurt. 
She said, I'm expensive. I'm high maintenance. And she divorced that brother. She divorced that brother because he couldn't make no more money and he was getting disability because he got injured on the job. So even when it comes to your own wife or the girl that you that you that you're dating, you got to be careful. You got to know who you with, man. So when she come to you, you know, uh, uh, if she comes to you as a Karen, because there's a lot of black Karens out there. If she come to you complaining about another man, you have to really think about, OK, number one, she's got a history of doing X, Y and Z. Do I put my life on the line or do I just go investigate to find out what happened? Yo, man, what's up, man? Right. And, 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 and nine times out of 10. It's that female. It's not so much as the other guy that you feel you got to defend your girl from. It's her. Right. So you got there's a lot of dudes right now that's in the grave or that's locked up behind bars because of a female, because of a lie of a female. I know females that had cheated on their husbands, right? And even white chicks defeated, uh, cheated on their husbands. And then she ended up pregnant. And sometimes they're, they're not even pregnant. They just cheat. And what she went and did was she went and told her husband that the dude she cheated with raped her. She cried rape because she chose to go sleep with this dude outside of her husband or her boyfriend. And I remember one or two chicks got pregnant and she said she was raped. So now this dude ended up in jail. One, one white dude got his little posse together and went looking for this brother. Right? Right? You know, because she lied. So your girl, the same girl that you lay in the bed with, could go out there and see with another dude, come back pregnant. And if you watch paternity court, you see it all the time on paternity court where these dudes come on there and these females be talking about that he's a deadbeat. He just don't want to. And listen, brothers, be careful. When you start hearing these females talk about don't want to take care of my child. There's a reason why she's saying my child. She's not saying our child or his child. She says my child because she knows that it's not your child. So on paternity court, you got these dudes coming on there. And then she get mad. It ain't your child. And so now he's doubting and she's like, he knows it's his child. And then when the paternity test come back, he's not the father. So now his name is on that birth certificate. He bonded with these kids. And it's hard to let go. And then in the end, he ended up being a sucker saying, oh, I'm going to try to stay around and work it out with her. I still love her, though. After she lied and called him a deadbeat and trapped him. So, men, you have to know your girl, man. Be careful. Choose your battles wisely. Don't be like Will Smith. Just walking up slapping dudes, man, because you can lose your life that way. You can lose your life walking up slapping a man, especially in these states where they have stand your ground states. These stand your ground laws, be careful, man. You walk up on somebody and they, they put you down permanently and she's going to scream and then she's going to put a GoFundMe page on the Internet and then she's going to try to claim SSI. She's going to get SSI. We see that on paternity court. Dudes die. Next thing you know, these females coming out of the closet talking about they got a baby. And they want to try to collect SSI. It's about the money. So you have to really question yourself, brothers, in this day and time. is like, are these females really worth your time protecting them? Because every woman don't deserve to be protected, man. They're not worthy to be protected. You look at that woman that's, that's running for the Supreme Court now. She can't even define what a woman is. Right? And she's, and she's protecting... Uh, dudes with child porn, these perverts, and then helps them out, comforts them. So pick, choose your battles wisely, man. And, you know, think about what, what Will Smith did to, to, to Chris Rock just a couple of years ago. That was toxic masculinity. That's all they talked about was toxic, toxic masculinity. Being a man was toxic. And now these same females want you to protect them with your toxicity, <laughs> right? So 
Choose your battle wisely. The only people you should be try- should be trying to protect is your mom, your wife or lover, daughter, sister. You know, them the ones you have to focus on and protect. And even then, choose your battles wisely because a lot of times it's not really what it's made out to be. You know, they may make it appear to this one way and then you find out after the facts that it wasn't. You know, and you don't want to feed their desires. One more story before I before I close this out. And I shared this story before. I was in my store one day and this dude walked in. Never seen him before in my life. And he wanted to use my phone. And I said, no, bro, I don't have public phones in here. He wanted to use my cell phone. I, I don't do that, man. Because by law, depending on where you are, by law, if you hand the person your phone, you know how people walk up and say, can I use your phone? And you say, sure, no problem. You hand them your phone. Well, there was a case where this dude was over to another one of his friend's house, right? And then the dude that he was visiting, his friend was over there. So the dude had a brand new, I don't know if it was an iPhone or a Razor phone, but dude was like, oh, that's the new iPhone? He said, yeah, yo, can I hold that? So he let him hold it. Dude checking out. Dude walked away with it, right? So dude called police, and the police came, and he was saying that dude stole his phone, right? And the police says, well, how did he get the phone? I gave it to him. He wanted to hold it. He said, I don't even know. He didn't even know the dude. But he was over at his friend's house, so he felt he was all right. So the cop said, we can't do nothing about it because you he didn't steal it. You gave it to him. He said, had he have taken it, that would have been a different story. He said, but you handed the phone to him. You put the phone in his hand, so you gave it to him. He didn't steal it. The dude was like, but he, I just let him hold it. He walked away. He said, but still, you handed it to him. So be careful who you hand your phone to. And I told him, I said, nah, bro, I don't, I don't you know, have any public phones. I don't let nobody use my phone. This dude went off on me in my store. Now, there was a black female standing over near the, the books the black by the black authors, and she was reading that. And they've always known me to be like, y'all see me online, you know, calm and collected. And so the dude threatened me. And me, I don't take threats too lightly. So when dude threatened me, got nasty and threatened me, I'm like, what? So I came away from behind that counter. I was walking like Will <laughs> when he was walking towards Chris Rock. Dude saw me coming. He took off, started running, right? I went outside my store. I left the female in the store. That's where my that's where my mind went now. So now I'm in that zone. So I'm walking up the street, man. Yo, yo, come back. What's, what's up? I knew he called the dude a punk and everything, man. I was just out of myself. So like the little gang that was around that area, the 110, they was like, yo, wise, man. They said, you want us to get him for you? You want us to get him? Man, I was just too much in the zone. I'm going after this dude. And dude literally ran from me, right? So I got back to my store. I apologized to the woman in there. I said, I apologize for that. And she told me it turned her on to see me like that. This female told me it turned her on to see me upset and aggressive going at this other dude. With the motive and intention on hurting him. That was my motive and intention. Had he not ran, I probably only God above knows what would have happened. I would probably ended up in jail or in prison. But that's how quick it happened. But this female tell me that it made her, it, 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 it excited her, it turned her on when she saw me like that. So there are females that, that drain that kind of energy out of dudes. They, this is a term um, I usually use for that where... They just like drain energy out of you. You know, they're like vampires. So when I came back and apologized, I apologized for that. She told me it turned her on. So there's females that actually get turned on when they see dudes aggressive like that. So you got chicks that would make up stories just to see her man in action. When it's really for nothing. So now you end your life or end up in jail or harming another man. Because of her ego. Just to make her feel good. So, pick your battles wisely, brothers. Choose your battles wisely. But my question is, 
Are women in this day and time, are they worthy to be protected? Especially if they claim to be feminist. Black girl magic or divine femininity. Do they deserve to be protected? I don't think so. So feedback, tell me what you think. Subscribe until next time. I'm fearless.